Open problems are a resource. They drive the engine of mathematics forwards. And there has been no greater source of open problems than from the prime numbers. This is such a fascinating area, in my opinion, because basically, as, the, as I have said many times about these issues, they're very easy to understand, to get into, to start, but probably impossible to solve, or at least extremely difficult. So, um, let me just start with something I used to do, sometimes if I was in a car park or something, and I'd, um, I'd get a bit bored, see a number plate, and then I'd break it up into its different factors. So it's 216. What, no, what integers divide into 216? Well, 6 goes into it, and 36 goes into it, and... Um, 6 goes into 36 twice. Okay. And we can go further. 2 goes into 6. When I say goes into, I mean it divides it, okay? 3 also divides 6. 2 divides 6. 3 divides 6, and so on. So there's a couple of... Um, thing you might want to notice here. Firstly, if you're a religious person, then you might want to call this something like the, um, I don't know, the multiple of a beast or something, because it's actually equal to 6 times 6 times 6. Although, actually, I think I heard in a book that the real number of a beast is actually 616, if you translate it from the Hebrew. Uh, don't quote me on that, but anyway, I think it's not actually 666. But anyway, the point here is about this division thing. You see, we can make this tree to show which numbers divide by which numbers, and we find out at the end, if we just take all these, let's circle all the numbers where we can't carry on this process any further, and then we see that 216 is going to be equal to 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3, <sighs> which is 2 cubed times 3 cubed. Okay, so what we've just done there is essentially um, we have just factored 216 into primes. What are primes? What are prime numbers? A prime... Whoops, let's give a proper definition. A prime is a positive whole number that is greater than 1, we'll talk about that in a second, and is only divisible by 1 and itself. That's the deal. Okay? Okay then, so a little warm-up problem then. Um, it's going to be for you to factorise Mm, how high shall I go? Let's go for something fairly easy. Uh, factorise 240. 
In other words, I want you to find all the prime factors. So in a little bit like uh, chemistry, where different, um, what's the word I'm looking for, different um, Okay, so just a little bit like in chemistry, where different compounds can be decomposed into different uh, atoms of different kinds. Just so when you're talking about division, uh, numbers can also be divided up um, into these different into these different kind of atomic or kind of unbreakable pieces. Um, but why is this important? Well, it's important because it's important for several reasons. I mean, basically, the uh, if you're historically interested, the research that prime number related problems have driven um, have undoubtedly revolutionized the world because just so much thought and work and math has been done out of this that it's made a big difference. Also, all our credit card numbers are all based upon an assumption that it's very difficult to do operations related to prime numbers and factorization. So if it turns out that someone finds an easy way to factor numbers, they're going to be able to completely ruin our financial system. Although, let's hope that doesn't happen, right? Okay, so how do we actually find the prime numbers? Well, there was a pretty clever way of doing it, which some uh, Greek fellow called Aratosthenes came up with. And it's basically a sieving method. It works like this. Write down a list of whole numbers. Now here's what we do. Forget about number one. Um, number two is our first prime, okay? Because the definition of a prime, let me just remind you, a prime, what is it? It's a number that's bigger than one, and it's only divisible by one and itself, okay? So how do we find these primes? Well, we know that two's prime, obviously, because it's uh, bigger than one, and it's only divisible, you know, you can only write it as two equals one times two, so that's there. And now, because of this, we know that four, can't be prime because it's divisible by two. We know six can't be prime because it's divisible by two and so forth. So four can't be a prime, six can't be a prime, eight can't be a prime, neither can 10, 12, 14, 16, or 18. Okay. Now we come to the next, um, the next thing we haven't crossed out here, which is three. Is three prime? Well, yeah, I mean, we can check it by this criteria. It is prime indeed. Certainly not divisible by two. And now, since this is prime, we know that six cannot be prime because it's divisible by three. So we can cross off six again. We know that nine cannot be prime because it's divisible by three. So we can cross off nine. We can also cross off 12 and 15 and 18. So then we just basically carry on in this fashion. We circle the next, um, the next number we get. We cross off all the multiples of it off the list. Um, then we get seven. We've already got rid of 14. We get an 11. We get a 13. We get a 17. 
And they're the first few primes. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, and thirteen. Okay? Here's a question for you. What is the two hundred and fifty fourth prime? And I strongly encourage you, if you're uh, very geeky like me, to actually try and figure this out without using a computer. It's not such a hard thing to do. Try and find out what's the 254th prime. Did the primes go on forever? What do they look like? There are many, many questions you can ask about them. The bottom line is that nobody really knows what's going on with primes. Um, they seem to follow a distribution quite well. Um, and there's something called the Riemann hypothesis, which is at the moment the greatest, sort of, sort of most famous unsolved mathematical problem in the world. And one of its implications is that in some sense it implies that there is some randomness, some pseudo randomness in the distribution of prime numbers so god isn't only playing dice the dots that are painted on the dice are um, tied up with the notions of randomness perhaps but um anyway what about some open problems this is a lovely one goldback's conjecture And what it states is that every whole number greater than three. can be written as the sum of two primes so let's just uh, see if this conjecture holds up for the first few things so what's the first sorry every, every even number not every whole number my apologies. Okay. So it says that every even number from four onwards can be written as the sum of two primes. So let's start then. What about four? Well, four is equal to two plus two. And two is prime. So that checks out. What about five? Well, five is equal to two plus three. That checks out. What about seven? Well, that's equal to two plus five. So that checks out. And people have tested this for the first million, billion or so cases, but nobody knows. Is it true? How cool is that? One of the most basic things in um, sort of elementary number theory, people have been working on it for thousands of years, not, for, okay, yeah, thousands of years, I think. No, okay, Goldbach's thing was probably formulated about 200 years ago, but still, people have been thinking about these things since antiquity, and we don't even know this. Another famous problem has to do with twin primes. So here are some twin primes, five and seven. Here's another pair of twin primes, 11 and 13. So um, basically primes A and B 
are called twin primes when either a minus b equals 2 or b minus a equals 2. That's a definition. So here's another conjecture for you. I'll write it up here. Conjecture. Excuse me for shifting this paper around. I'll try and get a bit more visible in a second. Okay then, so um, this is another huge conjecture, um, and it's sort of just about as as baffling as the other one because it looks like it should be fairly easy to investigate. So, um, about two thousand years ago, Euclid um, created an absolutely masterful proof that there's an infinite number of primes. Now, I'd love to tell you about it, but in the interest of saving time, um, I'll just let you look it up. So you prove that there's an infinite number of primes. However, there are certain different configurations in the primes. For example, we have this phenomena of so-called twin primes, where we have primes appearing in the sequence, which, are, which just have one non-prime number between them. So in other words, we have these primes that differ by only two okay so we'll call these kind of twin primes we have 11 and 13 they're a pair of twin primes five and seven are twin primes is there an infinite number of twin primes no one knows if you go far enough do you find that after say 100 billion 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 to the power of 865 trillion there are no more twin primes or do they just go on forever? Nobody knows. And, um, I mean, it's not just, it's not just these particular open problems. I honestly believe that anybody who's curious can discover new things about, about prime numbers. I mean, I remember I got a beautiful book a long, long time ago when I was about 16. It was called something like um, the, it was called Elementary Number Theory, The Queen of Mathematics Entertained, Entertains. And on the first page, there was a great big list of unknown things about number, about number theory and prime numbers. And one of the most intriguing questions I thought was this one, which is... Um, what is a formula to find the nth prime okay how do we compute the primes i mean um i've i've done the first few here okay so if we had this formula f then if we input um, 1, we get the first prime, which is 2. If we input 2, we get the second prime, which is 3. If we input 3, we get the next prime, which is 5. 
and 7 and 11 and so forth. But what is this formula? How do we work it out? How do we make a machine that generates prime numbers? So um, I thought about this quite a lot. I actually, it turns out that there's something called um, Wilson's theorem, which allows you to do this and basically gives you this formula that was actually discussed in the book I was telling you about. Um, but actually, yeah, I found some improvements on it. Uh, I, I looked a lot at prime numbers, and I came up with a kind of generalized Wilson's theorem, which I've not as yet published. 